Today we're going to talk about the key considerations for the most important part of your RC crawler, your wheels and tires. Uh, believe it or not, you know, it's not so much your, your crawler, your motor, your servo. It's your wheels and tires. Where the rubber meets the road is where it makes the most difference. And we're going to talk about the five key considerations when choosing your setup. So the first one is your tire. First, uh, you choose your size. Uh, the standard size is a 1.9 inch wheel and the diameter of the tire depends uh, if you're running class one, it's, I believe it's 4.2 inches, but most people who are just rallying or class two or, or just playing around is this one. It's uh, 4.8, 4.9 inches is usually the diameter you're working with. Okay, and now we talk tread pattern. What tread pattern do you use for it, it? As everyone says, it's personal preference and it depends on where you live. I think personal preference uh, is not so much the key. It's really more a regionality. You know, if you live in a lot of steep uh, places, which is the majority, I think, of rock crawling, you know, you want to climb the steep stuff, right? Um, then uh, you want a tire that has a lot of tread, a lot of fingers. This is a Hyrax. It's special because each tread has three different fingers or knobs. Uh, this is the standard Traxxas tire. So if you're doing a lot of steep climbs, you want a lot of, um, uh, a lot of chances to grip that rock. Okay? Uh, if you're doing a lot of, of muddy terrain, slick rocks and roots, you want bigger knobs you know, more defined knobs, uh, as well as if you're trying to go fast and do a lot of uh, trailing. Side healing is a consideration as well. But, but the other key consideration with tires is the rubber compound. What you want is one, soft rubber, but even more important, grippy rubber. You know, you, you think of the, the, uh, the ping pong players uh, in uh, the tops in the world. They, they spend years trying to perfect and choose the perfect rubber or ping pong paddle because what they're what they're dealing with is not just uh, softness but tackiness or grippiness so you want a grippy rubber okay so choose that the next one the other important element is your foam your foam takes the place of air pressure okay so since we can't fill this up with air and maintain the perfect pressure you know 18 psi 8 PSI or 9 PSI, we can't do that. Uh, our stuff's not accurate enough. We deal with foam. And the foam, uh, this is probably, this is what comes, I believe, in a Traxxas. The foam tries to produce a balance of supporting your tire um, and gripping the rocks as well, okay? So the key consideration here is uh, the foam should be different for the, the weight of the vehicle. You know, if you have a, 15 pound vehicle, it should have stiffer foam. If you have a five pound vehicle, it should have softer foam because you want that, that, uh, that con conformity that happens uh, that gives you grip, okay? Uh, a key, key development in, um, in foam technology is dual stage. So dual stage, so there's two needs for foam. One is to support the vehicle laterally uh, from tipping over uh, from flipping over, or flipping forward, uh, and whatnot. And the other is for conforming on on rocks. So if you make it too stiff, it's good at the tipping over stuff, but it's no good at gripping rocks, right? So they said, hey, why don't we have two materials, an inner core that's stiff and an outer one that's very soft. Uh, so the inner uh, takes care of the uh, lateral stability stuff, the structure, and the outer takes care of the conformity and that works very well. So this is from ProLine, I have links in the description. This is from Team Ot6, uh, Halo. Uh, so they have, depending on the weight of your, uh, your vehicle, they have different sizes of the inner, inner donut. This is very stiff, you know, it's just not gonna conform. And something really cool about this company, the technology, uh, is uh, they wrap the, the foam to the side like that. And what does that do? It gives you a uh, support 
on the side walls, oh, yeah, especially on that corner. This one, not so much. You know, there's a there's kind of a a, a a place here where it doesn't it doesn't behave like air pressure. So this is a pretty cool technology, uh, and it works quite well. Uh, the other new technology that has really entered the marketplace is, is 3D printed foam, uh, and, and it's not really a foam; it's 3D printed plastic. And what they said, 3D printing is so amazing because they're able to produce shapes, visualize shapes, and produce it. Uh, and what they have, what you have is a material, a web material that has the same characteristics. And so if it's plastic too, it has lateral rigidity, but uh, on the up and down, it conforms. So pretty good, huh? All right, so that's the, the concept of foam. One of the things you can upgrade, if you upgrade your foam on your stock Traxxas, uh, into one of these, you'll actually see a significant uh, improvement. And you know, the, uh, a, a Defender, which is a heavy vehicle, should have different foam from a Traxxas Sport, uh, TRX4 Sport, uh, because they just weigh so much different from each other. Okay, the last thing I'll talk about is wheels. Um, and uh, this is your stock wheel. The two types of wheels are, you know, just plastic uh, glue-on wheels, where the only way you um, you get the you keep the tire to retain is you glue them on with uh, CA glue, okay? And if, you know it works okay, but when you want to change your tire, uh, when you want to change your foam, you can't do that. <laughs> you have to throw this whole thing away, okay? Uh, so enter the beadlock technology. Beadlock is uh, a couple, three pieces of, of wheel usually. Boom. It pinches the tire, you cinch the bolts, and boom, uh, uh, you have your, uh, uh, your, your tire attached to your wheel, and it's really cool. So the advantages of these are you can change the, the look, you can change the width, you can change the offset. Offset is what dictates whether you uh, are flush with the fender of your car, whether you uh, are tucked in or you stick out. So this is... Uh, let, let's just pretend this is zero offset. Uh, plus 10 offset would go in the vehicle. Minus 10 offset would go out of the vehicle. Okay. So the last consideration uh, on wheels is uh, weight. Uh, it's an ideal place. Uh, it's one of the cool places to add weight because it's, it's very low on the vehicle. It's the lowest part of the vehicle. Um, so you can add weight. This ring, imagine if you had a 100 gram um, uh, ring, boom, it's stuck in there and it doesn't, it doesn't bother anyone, but it's your vehicle will automatically uh, have lower center of gravity. It will offset the weight of a big body and you can configure what weight is good for you. Maybe more in the front than the rear. The last thing I'll talk about is venting. So the concept of venting. Um, so what is venting? Uh, the air is trapped inside of this uh, of this wheel and this tire, uh, and if you if you don't punch a hole, it's called uh, uh, unvented unvented tire, and that's good, you know, as a general uh, general use. If you use uh, a lot of uh, if you go in a lot of water, a lot of dust, uh, it works well, you know. But if you want the highest performance, if you want your foam to do the work, you don't want air pressure, a balloon to interfere and do the work for you because that's more unpredictable. So the concept of venting is punching a hole in the system. And the system is the tire or the wheel. So you can punch a hole in the tire or punch a hole in the wheel. So in the Traxxas TRX4 world, um, they, they wanted uh, vented wheels for the highest performance. So they punched the hole in the wheel. Uh, an advantage of that is if you run in water, you can put a piece of Gorilla Tape Tape that up, and you have an unvented prevent stuff from entering the wheel. Um, so a, a disadvantage of venting on the wheel is if stuff gets in there, like water, it's hard to get it out. You know, you can't use centrifugal force. So the other way to vent the wheel is just punch a hole on the tread. You know, so usually not on the tread but on the on the casing. Um, and we're such low use anyway on these vehicles that you know that that doesn't really uh, uh, compromise uh, the structural uh, rigidity uh, soundness of, of the system unless you want to go really fast yeah you don't want to do this on a fast 
on a fast car. So, so that works just as well. One hole here, one hole here. And when it fills up with water or dust, you just spin it pretty fast and the th the old, all the, the water will spill out because of centrifugal force. force. So there you go. Wheel, tire, and foam. And once you get it dialed, it's pretty cool. Thanks for the time, guys.